Rev up your engine! Now here's something you don't see every day. A Toyota 4Runner, brand new, 2020, it's got like 15,000 miles on it, and the engine's making noise, especially when it's cold. A customer, he took it to Toyota, it's always made the engine noise, and of course, they say it's normal noise. Yet, it makes a lot more noise than this old 4Runner that has 386,000 miles on it. As you can see, check it out. Here's the old one. And here's the new one. Now even a semi-deaf man like me can hear that valve train noise in this brand new truck. And it's done it since it was brand new. Now it makes the noise worse when it's ice cold, but still, when you hear this thing, this is a brand new engine with 15,000 miles on it. Even now that it's warmed up, you can hear there's excessive engine noise. Now, when it's ice cold, you can hear it a lot. It's a lot more distinctive. Now, when I listen to his link that he sent me with my headphones on, you can hear that is a rattling sound. To me, it sounds like it's internal to the engine, and he finds that it's generally when it's about 1,500 RPM when the engine is ice cold. That is not a normal sound. Now, as you just heard, you can hear that thing rattling. That is not normal. I'm gonna check to see if anything's going on with my computer. It may or may not, because if it's bearing wear, since the engine's only got 15,000 miles, it's gonna make the noise from cold, but it may not affect the running of it yet. We're gonna check out the live data, see if anything is odd. Well, the acceleration sensor, the voltage should not be changing while it's idling. Maybe the vehicle has a problem with just the sensor, which will make the ignition timing wrong, which will make that same rattling noise when you accelerate at 1500 RPMs. Now the long-term fuel trim is minus 4.6%. It should not be that high in a vehicle this new. It is subtracting fuel for some reason. Okay, now here's a really oddball one. The EVAP emission is incomplete. The catalyst monitoring is incomplete. Yet, he's never had the computer reset. He's never had anything done to it. There's something going on in this thing electronically. There's no arguing that because they should all have been completed a long time ago. He didn't change the battery. He didn't do anything. So there's something electronic wrong with this vehicle that the Toyota dealer isn't admitting to. Here's some more data. The distance from battery disc cable connect. Okay, the battery was disconnected, but that was 22,331 kilometers ago. I got my scan tool set on uh, metric because I do all the metric analysis of grams per second and stuff, so I keep it on that. Well, this thing should set it back maybe after five, 10 miles of driving. Everything should be complete but it isn't, so there's something electronically going wrong here. Now everything else looks pretty normal, but with it being incomplete for the catalytic converter monitor and some other monitors and subtracting fuel, there's something going on here that isn't just right. That knocking noise on acceleration, to me, sounds like ignition timing is off. Could be that one sensor. Now, if the sensor isn't working right, this is a new car. It can work just poorly enough when it's cold to make that noise, but not bad enough to trip any codes, because it has no codes. And you get something that rattles only at a certain period of time, you've got to understand the software and these things are pretty complex. When they're colder, they have a different parameter for setting codes than when they're warmer, because of course, you got to make a car run a little bit richer when it's ice cold, and then when it's warmed up, it runs a little bit leaner. And since it doesn't do it much at all when the engine's warmed up, it's gotta be something to do when it's getting enriched. Maybe it's enriched too much because it's showing that it's subtracting fuel long term. I find it shocking that the Toyota dealer said, one, they can't find anything wrong, because I saw this data right off the bat. That wasn't hard to find. And two, he sent the videos that you saw with that rattling noise, and they said, oh, that's normal. Well, it's not normal. I work on enough of these things to know it's not normal. When you have a brand new 4Runner that makes a lot more noise than one with 380,000 miles, something's definitely wrong. I mean, it's got worse fuel trims than this thing with 386,000 miles on it. Now, this man took it to the Toyota dealer, and they were nice to say, leave it here overnight. So he left it for a couple of days. But then they said they didn't find anything wrong with it. 
but he said they didn't show him any scan tool data they didn't show him any kind of analytics they just said oh there's nothing wrong with it don't accept this kind of stuff especially when you pay fifty thousand dollars for a unbelievably well-made forerunner they're all still made in japan this obviously has flaws i see it just from the little data that i get so i'm sending them back he's still got the sounds in the phone that he's sending me that i'm gonna add i can't understand how if anybody heard that rattling sound could say that's normal because it isn't now the problem i found here has nothing to do with the japanese themselves because any time in the past when i was in houston when somebody had a problem like this i sent them to the toyota dealer i know one of the owners he knew who i was once he even put an engine in one of my customers who bought a used avalon free no questions asked and she bought it and the cams went out on it i've even had japanese gentlemen come to the door hand a check to my customer for work that i did that said they should have fixed under warranty but the problem lies with the actual owners of the dealerships now i see this all the time with general motor products they say oh those v8 engines that's normal that's what they sound like and they've been doing that for years ask anybody who owns a v8 gm that's got knocking noise they'll be complaining about it and they'll say well gm didn't do anything about it they said it was normal now toyota they generally don't do things like that perhaps it was a lack of communication they didn't really listen to it or sad but true at all the dealerships these days the mechanics are in a hierarchy and the best ones get the jobs that make the most money and the ones that get possible warranty work a lot of times they're the lower end mechanics and that's the job they get stuck with because warranty work doesn't pay like normal work does and unless it's a recall that they have to do they want to shy away from that stuff but in this case that rattling noise he takes it back and after this video is uploaded i'll bet you there's a different tune that's playing to them this time just like the one in alvin texas where they charged the customer over 10 grand more than she thought she was paying for the new tacoma and then i made a video guess what happened she got a check for the difference they handed it to her and before they said oh no you signed a contract there's nothing you can do about it you need to be serious when you have a problem you got to think logically don't accept oh that's normal i can't find anything wrong you heard that video you heard that rattling anybody knows that's not normal in a toyota it's the one down there that's got 384,000 miles still runs like a top that is not normal noises and it doesn't even have a fuel trim as bad as this with 380,000 and this only has 15,000 miles on it so i'm sending him on his way with a lot of information and he videoed the data that i had that he can show him and we'll see what happens now if toyota owns up to it and fixes it hey i'll show that i'll talk about that i'll give you updates on it everybody deserves a chance to be a straight shooter we'll see what happens in the future so stay tuned and here's some bonus questions and answers ricardo says scotty my question about the mazda mx5 miata does the current miata have a direct and port fuel injection well i drove one it only had the direct fuel injection system they seem to be building them better now mazda never had a real problem in their engines of carbon buildup like the volkswagens did where the volkswagens you'd have to take the intake off and you'd actually get a sandblasting machine and put walnut shells in it and blast all the carbon up it could be that thick mazda never really had a problem with that the one that i drove anyways had direct and it worked perfectly fine there wasn't any particular problems with it you know toyota's got that system now that has both direct and the port so the port cleans it you won't get any build up and it's it's even more than that with toyota it's, it's a performance more power been in better gas mileage and it's a really complex system some of the time it's spraying the direct ones some of the times it's spraying the port ones. sometimes it's a combination it's a very complex system now, i haven't seen them break yet so blah, blah. but when they do break they're going to be stinkers to fix there's no arguing that it does make more sense to have one system and not two because all that on top of each each other two separate systems when they break good luck finding mechanics who can fix the things neil mcdavid says i'm looking at a 2001 ford expedition with 280,000 miles for 2200 bucks four by four should i look for one with fewer miles can i use this will it last a while it was a one owner car it looks like it's in good shape well you know normally i would never buy a ford expedition with 280,000 miles they're great vehicles when they're new as they age they have all the high-tech gizmos and gadgets and they all break as time goes on but if you don't care about all those gizmos and this really 
was a one owner car. They're the only people that owned it. And the mechanic checks it and says engine and tranny still in good shape. Go ahead. Just don't think you're going to drive it another 280,000 miles trouble free. You're going to spend a lot of money. If you want something to kind of toy around with a little bit here, a little bit there, you could gamble with it. It's only 2,200 bucks. You realize what a new one costs. <laughs> <laughs> 20, 30 times that, you know, so <laughs> what the heck, uh, if it is in good shape, there's one owner, you want a car to have for a weekend, do some stuff with, but don't get it as an everyday driver, that would be a mistake, I've had people do that, and then it nickel and dimes them to death, and then they just give up with it, but maybe as a second vehicle, it could be okay, seeing that it was a one owner vehicle, so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell,